So one of the things that's happened in recent years is that electric car batteries have got bigger and the electric car driving range has got a lot further. But what happens if you want to save a bit of money? MG now offers the MG ZS EV with a choice of two battery sizes. There's the 73 kilowatt hour long range version and the 51 kilowatt hour standard range version. So should you save yourself two and a half thousand pounds and go for the standard range? Well today we've got a drive of over 400 miles that we're doing mainly on motorway so we're going to give it a test and see how you can manage with a slightly shorter range vehicle and whether it's worth considering for you. So this is our first stop on the journey. We've done just about 130 miles down to Norton Kane Services on the M6 toll road. And we actually had 20% battery left. Now we decided to stop now. Uh, two reasons. One, because uh, it's uh, a rapid charge space with a couple of uh, spots and it's quite a nice services. And second, because uh, I really needed a bathroom break. So we could have kept going a bit further. We had another sort of uh, 35 miles showing on the car. Uh, we decided to stop now and just see uh, what we're getting at the moment. Uh, we start with 21% battery, we're up to 40% already. Uh, so we're going to see how quickly the car charges and then we can get on our journey and see what the cars like to drive on the motorway. Now one of the things to understand with electric car chargers is that uh, the advertised charging rate is the maximum they can possibly get. Now this is a 120 kilowatt. Uh, rapid charger so in theory this car should be able to charge it up to those speeds however that's controlled by both the charger and the car so the car itself um, can set a limit and so can the charger now in this case uh, when we first plugged in the car was charging around 100 amps uh, at 400 volts which means it's getting about 40 kilowatts charge rate which is not great for a 120 kilowatt charger but the charger has actually dropped whilst we've been here and it's now only getting 28 kilowatts now there is another car charging on site and there's also a 22 kilowatt charger. Now it could be that these three chargers are set up to uh, load share, in which case it might be that the fact that there's three cars now charging is what's reduced our charge rate. And unfortunately this is a situation you get in a lot of motorway services where there isn't enough power coming to the grid and so they've had to limit the actual charger uh, capacity. So what we're going to do, we're going to charge to 50%, we're at 46% now, so we're going to charge to 50%. We're then going to set off and we're going to try and stop at GridServe's uh, Rugby uh, motorway services. Um, they've got 12 rapid chargers there, so we'll see if we get a better charge rate on those. Some of those can charge up to 350 kilowatts, so it'll be a good way to test how they're going. Um, we'll see how we get on uh, and we'll report back. So basically there's no difference whatsoever in the specification between the ZS EV standard range and the ZS EV long range. So this is the trophy spec. So that means that you've still got the heated pleather seats, you've still got the app control uh, for doing remote control, air conditioning, climate control, looking at your charge rate, setting charge timers, all that sort of stuff. You've still got MG Pilot, so we're here cruising along in the motorway, 70 miles an hour. Um, it's using adaptive cruise, so if the car cuts in front of you, it'll slow down slightly uh, to match their speed. So all the features you get on the more expensive model, the only difference with this car is that the battery is 20 kilowatt hours smaller, which, what does that mean in terms of range? Well, at the moment we're getting around 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, so that means that we're going to get around, uh, what, 65 miles range less in the, um, in, in the standard range versus the long range ZS EV. If your daily driving, like most people, is 20 or 30 miles, um, it makes sense to go for the smaller version because there's no point in paying extra for a battery that you're not going to use. However, if you're doing longer journeys like we are today, it could be that it saves you one charge or two uh, charges, uh, or it means that if you drive down the motorway and you get to a charging station and you know all of the bays are full, you've got enough to go to the next one. So, as it is, we've got a really slow charge rate at Norton Kane Services. We're not sure if that's a charger, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, Rugby Services. They've got 12 very fast chargers there. Um, so hopefully we're going to get onto one of those and see that if we get a really good charge rate. And that'll give a better indication as to what the charging times will be for you in real life.
So we're here at uh, Moto Services at Rugby. Now there's charges as far as the eye can see down there. And that's great, it's a new site that's been built in the last couple of years and obviously taking charging seriously. So we've got about 12 Tesla bays and then 12 electric highway bays, which grid server put in as well, which gives us plenty to choose from. Um, so we're just gonna get this plugged in and hopefully with this being one of the uh, faster chargers, we should be able to get a decent charge rate. So we actually moved chargers because the first one we tried wasn't accepting any of our cards, debit card or credit card. It's all very well having contactless readers with no app support, but if you haven't got the card working on the machine, you've got nowhere to go. Fortunately, we've got 12 chargers to choose from, so we've moved down a couple of bays and we're now plugged in. It is now charging and we're at 45 kilowatt charge rates. That's pretty much double what we were getting at Norris and Keynes. It's still way down on the 120 kilowatt charge rate that they advertise though. So whether it'll pick up and speed up as it, the battery gets warm and it starts charging, we'll have to see. Uh, I noticed that there's a Kia e-Nero plugged in next to us and that's only, also only getting 45 kilowatts. So maybe uh, the advertised rate isn't quite what you're gonna get from these machines. So this is our third and hopefully final stop of the day. Uh, we're just at Birmingham, just off the M6 uh, at a year ago, just like where there's two of these Eon Drive uh, rapid chargers. Now these are 175 kilowatt chargers. We've only seen a peak of 59 kilowatts. I'm not sure if that's because the battery's cooled down a bit whilst it was parked today. Um, but anyway, in, in 43 minutes, it's gone from 22% uh, up to 88%, uh, which is still you know within reason. We just had some food, a drink, and we're on our way back now. So uh, we're going to unplug the car, we're going to get on the road, and we've got another 150 miles to go. So we're pretty much at the end of our long day's journey today. Uh, we've been driving for over eight hours. Uh, it says 408 miles driven so far. I'm just getting to the point now, I'm dropping my cameraman, uh, Liam, off at his house, and uh, I've got another 25 miles to get back to my house. Um, the car's done it, it's done it fine. We could probably have done with one charge on the way down, uh, and one charge on the way back. Um, if that uh, charger at Norse and Canes hadn't been so painfully slow, we probably would have got away with just a, a fairly full charge there. But, um, well, basically, you know, we've done 120 miles since uh, the last charge, which was from 90% and run down to 20%. So on 70% of the battery, we've got 120 miles range. Uh, and that's been at the speed limit on cruise control with, um, with the heating on etc so uh, real world driving i think that really the standard range version can probably do about 160 miles motorway driving um, in this sort of weather uh, perhaps a little bit more in summer perhaps a little bit worse in winter um, if your daily journeys are you know way under 150 miles then uh, you might as well get the standard range if however you frequently do long journeys like this where you're going to go to london and back or edinburgh and back or whatever um, it might well be worth the investment in that larger battery. It just gives you a bit more flexibility if the battery, if the chargers aren't uh, working as fast as they should do or aren't operational or there's other people charging or all the other issues. So basically, as it comes down to usually, um, the charging network is what makes the job harder. So um, when you're just charging at home, everything's fine. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you.